Have you ever wondered why despite Africa abundant resources and incredible talent struggle to develop? We often travel abroad to study with the hope to return back home with tools we need to transform our continent. Today, we are diving into uncovering some of uncomfortable truth about the education our brothers and sisters receive abroad and how it has been linked to affect our development. Our brothers and sisters often go to abroad with the eye of returning back with something greater. Let's be real, many African students abroad are stuck with outdated theories that don't work for us. They are taught concepts that are irrelevant or relevant decades ago and that work in a complete different context. Pause for a moment and ponder on this. Why are Africans not admitted into a critical field or why are these foreign institutions not pushing or advertising critical field like advanced engineering or top tiers business program? Take economic theories for example, many foreign institutions teach principles rooted in Western economy, which doesn't fit to the unique challenge we face here in Africa. Our students come back home, try to apply these same theories and find out that they are practically useless. Speaking of these outdated theories, let's talk about what they are learning and relate it to our reality. Imagine coming back home armed with the belief that you have gained excessive knowledge that will transform your world, but just to realize that this theory can only work in a different landscape. This is like bringing a knife to a gunfight. We need strategies tailored to our specific need, not a one-size-fits-all solution. Many African economies are taught to rely heavily on free market principles. Sure, this work in developed nations with robust infrastructures, but here in Africa, we need government intervention to build our own businesses and economy. The World Bank and the IMF often pushes policy that don't suit our economic reality. They tell us to reduce our government's involvement in business revolution or local industry protection to attract foreign investors. But is that really the best path for us to follow? Consider this argument. Government has no business in doing business. Does this even happen in advanced nation? No. The fact that most government-owned enterprises are poorly managed in developing countries cannot take the fact away for government involvement in business. Let's take a look at China, for example. China's state-owned enterprise contribute about 15% of China government revenue and contribute about 45% of gross debt of the state. This indicates efficiency. Government abroad own businesses, but how do they manage this successfully? They provide public services and are legally separated from federal government to remain non-partisan. For example, the Chinese state owned enterprise are managed by the state-owned asset supervision and administration commission. These enterprises are massively contributors to the economy, showing that the right management, government-run businesses can thrive. In the United States, entities like the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the U.S. Postal Service operate efficiently and provide efficient service. They have a level of autonomy that keeps them from being bogged down by politics. Virtually every critical aspect of our economy is controlled by foreign investors because of our weak governance. Though, one of the reasons for weak governance in Africa is sometimes due to Western interference. Let's take a look at Libya under Gaddafi. Libya was one of the African countries with strong government because of its leader. But the West used propaganda and its people to topple down its regime. Living chaos in the country, this shows how Western influence has destroyed strong government in Africa. Recent coup in West Africa reflect this issue. These are happening because of the puppet installed by foreign influence. President Tinubu is working hard to attract foreign investors by removing barriers and reforming the tax system. It is a commendable effort, but we need to be cautious. Let's take a look at Ghana for example, where about 70% of its major companies are owned by foreign entities. This dominance can make the economy vulnerable. When foreign entity controls such a huge portion of the economy, they can easily influence local policies and economic conditions to favor their own interests, often at the expense of local development and stability. Foreign investors are not always the best option for any economy. Sure, they bring in capital, but often they repatriate their profit, leaving little benefit for the local economy. Instead, if we should focus our attention on building our local investors, they will reinvest their earnings 
back into the community and the economy, fostering sustainable growth and development. Another issue with foreign investors is they receive insurance coverage from their parent countries. If anything goes wrong with their investment, they are covered. But what about our local investors? This give foreign investors a safety net that local investors do not have. Placing local entrepreneurs at a significant disadvantage, local investors without similar protections will face greater risks and struggle to compete an uneven playing field. To truly boost our economy, Nigeria must prioritize local investors, providing our local investors with the same kind of support and security as foreign investors receive from their parent countries so that they can play on a level field. If we do this right, by encouraging local entrepreneurs and industrialization, this can create job opportunities, stimulate innovation and build a more resilient economy. So what is the takeaway from this video? For Africa to truly develop, we need a strong government that understands our unique challenges. We need to give our children an education that empowers them to solve our problems. This means empowering our educational system to ensure that they are relevant and tailored towards our needs. Africa must design its economic model that works best for its unique landscape, not receiving economic model from Washington DC or for the copy developed countries current economic model. Our leaders must craft policy that promotes local industries while engaging with the global economy.